All right, we are going to jump right into it. Let me just make sure YouTube doesn't start up on its own again. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I'm Chantel Thompson. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for Child and Family Services. And this is week three for our Black History Month speaker series, Black Influencers in Buffalo, Past, Present, and Future. And I'm really excited about our guest here today, Mr. Jamil Cruz. I'm going to tell you all about him, um, introducing you to him. Many already know who he is. And so we are so delighted to have him today. Jamil is an award-winning marketing and brand executive, entrepreneur, and community leader. With over 13 years of experience, he's, he has been instrumental in helping to develop brands across multiple areas, including politics, sports, and entertainment, and the nonprofit sector. Professionally, Jamil serves as the digital communications manager for Say Yes Buffalo. In this role, he helps lead the organization's marketing communication efforts, focusing on support for the Boys and Men of Color Initiative, community schools, parent centers, and Buffalo College Success Network. Jamil is also the founder and principal consultant of Cruise Control Media, LLC, an MBE certified digital and multimedia communications agency that fuses several marketing capabilities, including media production, event activations, public relations, and social media marketing. He's been named one of the top influencers in Western New York and is very active in the community. He serves as the Eastern Region Vice President for the National Urban League Young Professionals. Now serving in his second term, he provides support and technical assistance to Urban League Young Professionals chapters in the region in the area of advocacy, community engagement, and professional development. Jamil is also the founder and executive producer of the Changemakers 30 Under 30 Awards, an event that recognizes a diverse group of dynamic young professionals under the age of 30 from Western New York who continue to make an impact in their respective areas of expertise and work. Since its inception in 2011, the event has grown to become the largest award show that honors young professionals in Western New York. In his spare time, he serves on boards for the Buffalo Urban League, the YMCA, and is a newly inducted member to the Forbes, the culture. Jamil is also a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you so much for being here, Jamil. We are so excited to have you. I'm cracking up because it says in your spare time and I'm like, what <laughs> spare time? This dude is so busy, right? No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today, for sure. Thank you, thank you. So let's jump into our conversation. I have some questions and I'm sure um, our audience today has some questions. We had over a hundred in registration for your event today. So we are excited. Somebody says, I love your shirt, Jamil. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my All right, let's... Mara Lattimore. These are, this is her brand. Uh, she's, a, she's an incredible um, artist and uh, just musician here um, in the city, member of my church as well. So she is. She's out. incredible. And thank you for that. I'll have to play her next week. Um, what was the inspiration behind Cruise Control Media? Oh, man. So back, I want to say, oh, my God, it was it had to be around like 2008 or so, 2007, 2008. Um, I was working for a magazine, uh, uh, one of my best friends in the world, um, uh, we went to college together. She started a, a magazine, um, a fashion magazine. It was an online based magazine back uh, down and out of based out of New York City. And um, at the time, you know, we were, you know, she had named me the marketing director uh, for um, for the startup. So, you know, we were in the process of just really trying to get this brand up and going and get this brand established. And, you know, at the time we were reaching out to folks um, trying to get people to design our website. And then, you know, we're a startup. So we were like super broke, <laughs> you know? So um, so at the time, you know, when people were giving us these outrageous quotes of, um, in terms of how much the, the website was gonna cost, we was like, you know what? We can't do this. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try to do it myself. You know, I've always had a knack for technology and such, never had designed a website before in my life. And I tried to design the website and it was absolutely terrible. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, but I love the process of creating it, right? So, um, so I just started, you know, doing that more and more. Um, 
you know, creating websites just for the brand. I'm trying to make that one better. And also, you know, I'm like, you know, I could start doing this for other people as well. Um, so I started creating websites for other people. Um, and again, my, my first few websites for clients weren't that great. Um, but the more I kept doing it, the better I got at it. You know, this is all self-taught stuff. You know, and I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. This is this is things that, you know, YouTube University, <laughs> what, I, what I call it, you know. So, um, and like I said, I just got better and better at it. And I was like, you know what? I, you know, and I'm making a dollar off of this. So I'm, I'm, I'm like making money um, from from designing websites for people. Um, but then I had all of these other, you know, um, all of these other things, all of these other interests that I had with, with, with me that I love event planning, you know, social media was really starting, really starting to bubble at the time. Um, you know, so I, you know, I started to think to myself, what would happen if I started to kind of fuse all of these things together, all of these capabilities together? And that's where, you know, the company came from. Now, initially, I went through so many different name changes. Uh, we started out as Blueprint Lifestyle Marketing and um, Cruise Brand Management. And, and I mean, we went through a whole bunch. And, you know, I always had this cruise control media. You know, it was just a, a playoff of my last name. Um, and, that's, and that's what I wanted, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't until maybe uh, a few years ago, where I, you know, after all of the different name changes, I just kind of settled on cruise control media. Um, and really what I wanted to do is kind of create this platform where, you know, we are able to kind of create our own narratives, kind of tell our own stories and such, because media to me is nothing but storytelling. And I've always had a knack for storytelling, listening to good stories, um, telling good stories. Um, and I wanted to create a platform for other individuals to do that as well. So that was the sense of, that's where Cruise Control Media was born. I, yeah. I, I think I remember the name as far back as Cruise Brand Media. Yeah. I didn't know the first one though. I didn't know that's where that was. Yeah, Blueprint Lifestyle Marketing. That, <laughs> very <laughs> cool, like, very cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, we were creating the blueprint of, you know, because I was heavy into like the, the event planning and party planning and things like that at the time. And, you know, we, we wanted to kind of create this lifestyle brand. So um, that's what it was. And I'm like, okay, this just doesn't stick, you know? So, but, you know, I love cruise control media and that's what we end up sticking with. Yes, we love it too. So as we mentioned with our theme for this month, Buffalo Influencers, um, we really wanted to call on folks who are influencing the culture. Um, how do you see cruise control media or how do you see Jamil Cruz influencing uh, Buffalo immediately? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny when, you know, I kind of get labeled as like this influencer, like you, you have to understand I, I am such like a, the most humble person. And I, even when I, uh, when I hear that sometimes it's, it's still a little weird to me. Um, if you actually can see right behind me, uh, this was a, a magazine article from Buffalo Spree um, and they label, I, I, you know, this was completely just mind blowing to me that they listed me as one of the top influencers in Buffalo. And to me, that is that is still so mind blowing to me because I, you know, I just try to be as humble as possible, you know. Um, but for me, I want to be able to, you know, leverage this influence I have to to kind of help other people, you know, and leverage this influence in a way that's going to be beneficial to someone else. You know, I want to be able to kind of um, I have this mantra with uh, one of the one of my nonprofits that I run um, is lift lift as you climb. I, I feel like that we have an obligation as as influencers and such, as we continue to ascend to higher heights and higher elevations in our career and our professional development, we have an obligation to reach a hand back and bring people along with us. So, you know, that's what essentially me being an influencer, that's what I want to do is be able to provide opportunities to the next people. But also what, what particularly for cruise control media, again, I really want to be able to when we well, let me say this: when we think about media in in a sense here in Buffalo, in a you know we we often think about it in a very traditional sense, right? We think about it in television, um, in in radio, newspaper, magazines, and such. But you know, I've been telling people for a very very long time, for a very very long time. When I first got into media, my first job out of college was at a radio at WBLK. I'm um, as a marketing consultant, and I remember telling the program director back then, like, we really have to tap into this digital space that we're in right now because this this is going to be the future of of media. 
And, you know, of course, back then, you know, I was the, the young guy fresh out of college, no one was willing to listen to me. And you see, that's exactly what, where we are right now with it. So, you know, I've always had an interest in media and wanting to um, establish my own media empire, so to speak. So, and that's what exactly what I want Cruise Control Media to be, but I want it to be that way in this digital landscape that we're in right now. Um, so, you know, we, you know we, we can talk about it as we go along, but, um, you know, with podcasting and, you know, the, uh, the video production and things like that that we do, we really want to be able to tap into this, this digital space that we're in um, to really start to create those stories, change those narratives and such in a way that, you know, people aren't telling those stories for us. I love it. I love it. So I'm, I'm hearing you say we a lot mm -hmm. and you do so much. So I know you are not a woman operation with Cruise Control Media. So tell us a little bit about your team. Oh, man. Uh, listen, I, I've been very fortunate over the last several years. Uh, well, let me say this before I tell you about my team. Um, I, you know, for many, many years, I was operating as like a, a solopreneur, right? I was just that one man show, the one man team. And it, it was tough, you know, and, and I, I'm a firm believer that no one can ever grow and scale a business by themselves. Right. Uh, you know, so for me, you know, I had to, you know, I, but I have, at, at the time I had trust issues and control issues as well, you know? So, you know, if it's something, if it's my brainchild, I don't want, I didn't want someone to try to come in and kind of co-op, you know, you know, what I wanted to do. But I had to kind of get away from that way of thinking, right? Because I realized I really had to start to empower people to make decisions and really trust that they're going to make the best decisions for me. And, you know, if, if it if so happens that, um, you know, they make some decisions that's detrimental to what we're trying to do, then we will handle that appropriately. So over the last uh, few years, I've been very fortunate uh, to, to bring in a few individuals. I don't have a, a huge team, um, but I, I, I have about three or four individuals on my team right now who are just absolutely amazing. I always tell people, if you want, some, if you want someone to do something, um, if you want something done and you want something done right, have a woman do it. You know, and that's why I am, I have some of the strongest women around me uh, is really helping me kind of take this thing to the next level. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Trisha and Aviance and my girl Kelly. And then of course I got my guy Charles on the podcasting side, my sound engineer. Um, and I have a videographer as well that I work with. Shout out to my guy, Zach. Um, so it's a very diverse team that I'm working with, um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm so fortunate. I'm, I'm, I've been so fortunate and blessed. Um, and I realized even last year, even in the midst of a pandemic last year, I had the best year um, for my business ever ever last year, you know, from a financial standpoint, from an amount, the amount of volume that I was receiving with, with clients and such. Um, but I, was, I wouldn't be, have been able to do that on my own. You know, it, I had to entrust the people that was around me to be able to, uh, uh, to be able to make those decisions. And, you know, and, I, and I'm so glad I did because it just meant the, it meant overall the best for my company. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good leadership nuggets there. So can you tell us uh, about some of the projects that you worked on that have really um, had the greatest impact on the African-American community? I know you've worked with all brands from all different backgrounds, but being that we're talking about Black history and Black influence, tell us about some things that you've done to, you know, tell Black stories. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's, there's been so many, um, you know, from that Change Maker study on the 30 Awards, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to save that more until later, but um you know, one particularly that we're actually working on right now. Um, I, I had the opportunity uh, to partner with um, at and uh, the mayor's office in the city of Buffalo, and we created um, this new initiative. It's called Buy Black Buffalo. Um, and at the time, you know, I was a part of this committee and we wanted to figure out a way where we can start to um, really highlight um, Black businesses here in the city of Buffalo because there are so many incredible, incredible, just incredibly dope black businesses um, here in the city of Buffalo. Um, but oftentimes they kind of fly under the radar because they don't have the necessary resources that they need to be, you know, to really, you know, make themselves known. Um, so, you know, I had the opportunity to be a part and take a huge part um, in planning the first um, Buy Black Buffalo Week, which happened um, at the beginning of December of last year. Um, you know, I created the website for it, buyblackbuffalo.com. Um, we have all, you know, a bunch of participating businesses on there. 
And actually right now we are in the middle of our Black History Month celebration. Um, so it's our Buy Black Buffalo Black History Month celebration. So we've created a number of different activations. Um, we actually have one tonight. Uh, you know, I'm actually hosting uh, a, a virtual workshop tonight uh, with a Google digital coach. And we are going to be teaching people the importance of going digital and um, of going digital for their businesses and such. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'll be leading that conversation tonight um, at, at seven, six o'clock, seven o'clock. I, I, I'm 40 now. So my mind is just like, you know, I'm getting a little older. <laughs> so it's at six or seven o'clock tonight. Um, but um, you can go to buyblackbuffalo.com and some more information on there about that if people want to participate in it. But I'm like, I'm so excited that we have the opportunity to put something like that together because again, it's all about highlighting, you know, and it's for me, it's, it's really about equity, right? It's really about equity, making sure that, you know, everyone has a, an opportunity to succeed here in Buffalo. There shouldn't be one pocket of the community that kind of succeeds more than others. I mean, we have so much talent here in the city of Buffalo. And, you know, I want to make sure that everyone has a platform to be recognized for the work that they're doing here. I love that. Um, it's it's an opportunity to really influence the Black community on a large scale, right? Because you're talking about Black economics. And that's fantastic. I had no idea that you were a part of that whole operation. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah, we are really proud of you. That's so cool. Um, so with that, tell us what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've had as a Black man in media in Western New York? Yeah. We know that it's a really segregated uh, kind of region, seemingly. So tell us tell us about some of those challenges. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest challenges that I've seen um, is, is dealing with traditional media. Um, traditional media here um, is still um, largely a, a heavily uh, Caucasian industry to be in, whether you're in radio, whether you're in television and such. And oftentimes, especially in the news media, uh, you, we often oftentimes have, you know, these news outlets kind of telling stories in a way that portrays Black people, um, Black men in a certain light, you know, and I feel like that we have a responsibility to, and journalists have a responsibility to be honest in their journalism, you know, so, um, we, we've seen that. We saw it a lot last year with the protests, um, you know, with the social unrest that we had last year. And I was in the middle of those protests and, you know, and I'm not big on like going out and marching and things like that, but I felt like that I, I had an obligation to be there and to cover these things in a way because I didn't want outside media, outside influences, outside agitators to kind of come in and kind of co-opt our message and kind of co-opt what we were, you know, what we were protesting against. So, you know, I went down there and again, you know, I'm using a device like this is my media platform right here. I'm going, I'm going live at these different platforms, uh, at these different protests and such, um, just so people can kind of get an understanding of, of, you know, what's really happening on the ground out here. Because sometimes the media doesn't cover, cover it in a way where you get the totality of what's, what's really going on, right? So for me, it was like, it was really important for me to make sure that, you know, um, going out here and making sure that, these, these messages are being told and these stories are being told in a very, very honest way. Because I know, like I said, sometimes um, these traditional media platforms, uh, they, they just don't, they don't do the job that they're supposed to do. And this is really no, no knock or no shot because I, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for traditional media as well. I feel like that we need them, you know, but I feel like there has to be a level of honesty that sometimes we get away from. And we see that even in our national media and such, we see that often, you know, but you know, for me, it's just making sure that, you know, you know, stories are told honestly in the right way. I love it. I love it. So we we talked about some of your challenges um, and I feel like your involvement with Buy Back Buffalo is a pretty huge accomplishment. Um, if not that, can you tell us some of your other greatest accomplishments in your career so far? Boy, oh boy. Uh, you know what, Chantel, like I'm really, and I, and I, and I mean this honestly, Honestly and, and sincerely, I feel like I really haven't even scratched the surface yet. You know, I really feel like that um, what I'm planning on doing and things that's going to be coming out very, very soon is really just going to, you know, kind of change the game with, with media and, and digital media, particularly here um, in the city of Buffalo. Um, you know, one of my biggest accomplishments um, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with media, but um, was creating 
um, this platform for um, young, uh, diverse people of color and in all uh, backgrounds and such to be recognized for their work, which is this Change Makers 30 on the 30 awards. You know, um, this was um, this was something. This was a, a an idea that you know that came to me back in I'm going to say 2011. Um, I realized at the time I was going to all these different award shows and things like that, and I saw you know the more seasoned individuals, they were being recognized for, you know, for all of this work and such that they were doing. And oftentimes I kept seeing the same individuals getting recognized over and over again. And I'm just like, there's young people here who's just doing incredible things. And I know because I'm one of them, <laughs> you know? So I know that, you know, there's, you know, there's people out here that's doing incredible things. Where's the platform for them to be recognized? And I didn't see it. So, you know, I've, I've always been a problem solver. And I was like, you know what? I, you know, I didn't see it. I went to a couple of people, um, shout out to a couple of old heads that I went to and they were just like, like, no, 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 you know, just, and I'm just like, you know what, forget it. I'll just do it myself. And I did it. You know, I, we, we started the first one at a little coffee shop. It used to be the second cup downtown. Um, it had about 75 people. Um, and we've grown it in the last, this year's our 10th year. And we've grown it to be the largest award show in the region that, re that recognizes uh, young professionals under the age of 30. You know, we went from a coffee shop, a coffee shop, Chantel, to hosting this thing at Shays. You know, so that's, that's, um, that's like, I get goosebumps. Amazing. That's amazing. I actually, I attended the coffee shop, uh, 30 under 30. And, you know, I don't, we won't even discount the fact that it was at a coffee shop. It really was a wonderful event. It was such a good night, such a good atmosphere. Um, the opportunity to learn about young talent, you know, so many dynamic people in Western New York. Um, and I, that was the beginning of some really great things. Um, and we're going to get into, we'll talk about change makers too in a little bit, because I'm, I'm sure people are eager to hear more about that. Um, so we, we introduced you a little bit earlier, talking about your role at Say Yes. You are the digital communications manager. Um, all of Western New York is a fan of the work going on at Say Yes. They just do wonderful things with great leadership. Um, how do you view your work at Say Yes and, and what are some of the impacts that you've seen so far? Let me say this. First of all, I gotta give a huge shout out to everyone at Say Yes, the company, the company culture. Um, I say this and I'm not just saying this if people on, on here from Say Yes are looking at this right now. You know, I'm not just saying this just to appease anyone. Say Yes has literally been the best job I've ever had. Like this is a job that I've like I dreamed for. I didn't think it existed here in Buffalo at one point so much so that I, you know, I felt like that, you know, I don't think, I don't know what's here for me. And I'm thinking I'm gonna, you know, I think I'm gonna leave. But you know, uh, say yes has been just just absolutely incredible. Transitioning from, you know, when I was working in the public sector, coming over to say yes has been absolutely incredible. The team. Um, the culture there is just absolutely amazing. Um, one of the things that I love the most about Say Yes is really being able to um, tell the story of the importance of education and this, and really uh, representation is everything, right? Um, I was, you know, I remember when, when I was younger, uh, you probably remember this show, A Different World from way, way back, uh, late 80s, early 90s. And that was my first introduction to college. It's a different world. I, let, me, let me say, I grew up super, you know, super humble beginnings. It was very poor coming up, um, bounced from city to city, from DC to Buffalo, I was all over the place. Um, and I didn't really have strong, a strong, stable home, you know? Um, and I didn't have parents, and shout out to my parents, I love them to death, um, but there was no real stability there, right? So for me, you know, watching, you know, shows like that, a different world. I mean, the representation was everything, you know, because that was my first introduction to college. And it made me like, you know what, if this is, if this is what college is going to be about, I'm in, I'm like, you, you, you sold me, you know? So, um, and I think that's what we have the opportunity to do right now. And, and that's what we, we are doing right now with Say Yes. You know, we are, you know, we are giving students here, you know, that representation. So I'm, you know, me being able to, you know, create content in a way that really is engaging and showing people like what this experience of higher education and college is going to be like. I think that that's 
what's having people want to, you know, maybe take that, you know, go in that direction and, 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 and pursuing higher education. I know for me, I was a first generation college student. No one before me went, you know, um, and I know that's the, that's the story for a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of people that we, a lot of communities that we serve here in the city of Buffalo, that's the story for a lot of people. So we want to make, we want people to, uh, to be able to see that, like, you know what, like college is cool. You know, college, college, college can be really, I know college changed my life for the better. College absolutely changed my life, you know, so shout out to UV. Uh, I went to UV all my four years, man, and it just, and the relationships that I was able to make, um, I mean, I, I, I had my challenges as you mean, <laughs> for sure. But, you know, I made it out, I graduated and, you know, and I'm a better man because of it. So, but it started with that representation and being able to tell our stories, right? So I wanna make sure that we continue to do that. So more people can kind of realize this dream and really start to change the trajectory of, of their family, you know, lineage and structure and such. Yes, I love that. Um, same here first generation college student, um, and it absolutely changed the course of my life. Um, so with wanting to kind of tell those different world type stories or to, to um, give representation for Black youth in our community, youth of color, um, tell us a little bit how your role um, in, as a digital communications manager, how does that work together to achieve some of the things that you just spoke about? Yeah, so, you know, so essentially just kind of going back to you know what I just said, it's just really about telling those stories effectively and in, in, a, in a very honest way, you know, with people. So um, you know, I, I'm very fortunate where, you know, even throughout the pandemic, you know, you know, we still had gainful employment, we say yes. And you know, with me, I was still out in the field, even though we've been working from home, I've been out in the field, you know, um, capturing content, telling those stories of different individuals going to these different college campuses, meeting with, you know, college presidents and such, and, you know, creating different campaigns and such. Um, you know, we had this campaign that we started last year called State of Course. And it was really just to encourage students. And in, 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 in spite of the pandemic that we were going through, we wanted to encourage people to really just stay the course because like, you know, well, I'm a firm believer in this too shall pass. And even in this space that we're in right now with this pandemic, this too shall pass, right? So. Um, so when it does, we want to make sure that you are, you know, you know, prepared for what's what's ahead of you, you know. So, um, so again, just being being able to go out there and you know capture this content and kind of tell stories and highlight people. One of the things, uh, one of the great things that we're doing right now, um, you know, you know, I work across all um, all facets of the say yes um, culture. So you know, with our parent centers, with our community schools, with our Boys and Men of Color initiative, with our Engaging Fathers initiative as well, um, you know, and really telling those stories. We have this, um, this incredible uh, 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 digital series that we have, our Engaging Fathers of the Month. Um, so, you know, with our Nurturing Fathers program, and we're out here really being able to highlight, you know, fathers who are just super, super engaged. And, you know, maybe they weren't at one point, but them going through this nurturing and fathers program and how it changed their lives and such and be, being able to highlight these guys as, as a father of the month. Um, you know, you can go on our Say Yes YouTube channel and, um, and kind of see that. But it's, it's, just been, it's been absolutely incredible just being able to, um, you know, tell those stories and create content in a way that's, that's really been game changing and life changing for a lot of folks. Wow. That's so awesome. I mean, we could we could stay there talking about all the cool things that Say Yes is doing all day. Um, so we, we touched a little bit on change makers, 30 under 30. Um, you are involved in a bunch of other stuff. I totally forgot about the Forbes culture work. I forgot about the, the Urban League Young Professionals at the national level. I, I had in mind the Buffalo Urban League Young Professionals, uh, but you have elevated to a new office. So let's let's talk about all these extra <laughs> ways that you're influencing. Um, I know 30 under 30 is really dear to your heart. What's next for that? We can we can jump into all those good things. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, you know, again, 30 under 30 is my baby. You know, that is my, I, I absolutely love everything about that. And we, you know, I really, you know, see this thing as, you know, I'm, I'm a big picture type guy. So when we look at, excuse me, when we look at like award shows on television and things like that, I see that here in Buffalo and I see 30 under 30 being that, right? You know, just, 
Cuba's production, you know, like, and, and you, you've been to the events, um, you know, we, it's, it's a very entertaining event. It's just not just people who just coming up on stage and getting their awards. People are going to be thoroughly entertained when they come to the Change Makers 30 Under 30 Awards. We work with some of the most talented musicians and artists and such and have them come in and just put on an incredible show for us. You know, everybody come in black tie. We did, we, unfortunately, we weren't able to have the event last year because of the pandemic. Um, so, you know, but we, we, we still did um, have our class that we, you know, that we announced. So we're gonna do something special for them this year, especially with this, this year being the 10th anniversary. Um, you know, we're gonna have, you know, the, the, the big 10 year anniversary later on um, this year in October. Um, and I'm so looking forward to that because I'm hope, hopefully by that time, we'll be able to kind of come back together in person, um, you know, because it's one thing of doing things virtually, but it's a different experience, like when you're there in person, right? So, yes. And I want people to be able to feel that in-person experience with this event, because I'm telling you, no virtual event can do it justice with, with the, the feeling that you're going to get in person. And I, I, I put my, my life on that, <laughs> you know, so... Um, with um, the Buffalo Urban League and the Young Professionals, uh, again, this has been an organization that has truly changed my life uh, for the, the better half of my 30s. Um, you know, I, I was a member of the, the Urban League on a local level. I was a founding member of the chapter here in Buffalo. We launched at the end of 2012, um, you know, officially got launched on um, January 25th, 2013. I served in many different capacities. I was uh, came in as a communications uh, coordinator. I was a treasurer for the organization. I was the vice president of the chapter, and I was also the president of the chapter. And we, you know, we turned that. Um, we we really grew this thing from its inception to a nationally award-winning chapter, um, and we did that under my leadership. And I'm, that's something I'm so proud of, and so much so that I was tapped um, back in 2017. Um, to you know, to come on the national, the national level, the national team. So I got elected uh, to my first term back in 2017 as the Eastern Region Vice President. So I oversee all of the chapters in the Eastern Region right now. Um, and back in 2019, um, I had my election. I actually had a, it was a very tight race, but I was victorious in that race, and I'm super excited because um, you know we've been able to do some incredible things. We we launched our, under my leadership launched our first ever regional conference. It's called BeastCon. Um, we bring together young professionals from all over the region and we, and we go to these different cities and just bring, some, bring them some incredible value. Um, wow. Advocacy, professional development and such. So, um, man, it's like, that's been, that's been my baby. Uh, that's been another baby. I got, I got a bunch of babies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's because it, it truly changed my life. It, it really- It's really, so incredible. Yeah. Okay. Um, the relationships that I've been able to make with people, you know, um, it's all been like Urban League related stuff. You know, I've had, you know, celebrities on my podcast and, you know, and this has all been, you know, through the relationships that I've been able to make with people, you know what I mean? So, um, and then recently I was inducted to uh, Forbes of Culture. Um, it's, a, it's a partnership with uh, Forbes Magazine um, where we really kind of come, as, um, young professionals kind of come together um, a diverse um, a group of young professionals coming together um, to figure out how we can best address the challenges of, of, in our communities and such. Um, so again, this is an official partnership with Forbes Magazine. Um, I was the first person in the city um, to, um, you know, to be inducted. And I'm gonna give a big shout out to my sister from another mister, um, Kendra Brim. She was just recently um, inducted as well um, and supports the culture. So um, man, it's just been, it's been, Super incredible. I mean, I, Chantel, knowing where I came from and how I came up and being afforded all of these opportunities, this is nothing but nothing but God. You know, this is God just really having a hold over my life right now. It's just like, you know what? I don't care what you've been through. I got you. I got as long as you put in the work, I got you. You know, so I'm, I'm like, I've been incredibly blessed, you know, over, over the last several years. And Man, I'm I'm just excited to you know see what the future um, is going to hold. That's so awesome. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna go a little bit off script because I feel like you just kind of led us to this question. Um, and as much as you are willing to share, you said how you grew up. You know, Child and Family Services, Say Yes Buffalo. We service a lot of kids that probably grew up similar to how you grew up. Can you talk a little bit about how you grew up and like 
what changed, what decisions you had to make to kind of lead you in the direction, what mentors you had in your life, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I was born here in Buffalo, kind of the, the, the quick and dirty for it. Born here in Buffalo, I was raised in Washington, D.C. That's where my mom and my brothers are from. Um, when we were down there, like my uncle first was killed. Um, he was a drug addict. He was killed in a drive-by shooting. Um, and then three months later to the day, my grandmother died right after, in, on Thanksgiving night, right after we got finished eating, she died. You know, and I, I'm a firm believer. I, I've been, well, I've been saying this for as long as I can remember that. I think that she died from a broken heart from losing her son. Um, and then from that point, we just transitioned to, um, you know, being kicked out of our house. I remember people, I was talking to my brother about this the other day. I remember people, um, U.S. Marshals coming in. We're coming from school and they're just taking all of our stuff out of the house and putting it on the sidewalk and such because we lost the house. Uh, we lived in a homeless shelter. It was just my mother, my two brothers and myself. Um, we lived in a, in a homeless shelter. It was a room about you know, maybe a, a quarter of the, of, the, of the space that I'm in right now. Um, just one little box space. We um, lived in this homeless shelter for a little while. Uh, moved to Southeast DC, which was so ruthless. I mean, we, and mind you, this is late 80s. So this was during the, the height of the crack epidemic, you know, which, which ravaged our communities down in DC um, and the communities across the country as well. And my mother wanted us to get away from that, you know, so she moved us to Buffalo because that's where my dad is from and all my family up here. Uh, unbeknownst to us, my dad was still on drugs. Um, you know, he, he, he was a drug addict when we came up and it was just a bad situation. My mother was an alcoholic, you know, um, and I just remember just those days of just going without, you know, not having food in our house. My mother walking in blizzards just to go to a food pantry at, at the YMCA just so she can get us some food so we can have some dinner at, you know, um, at night and such. Um, and, you know, my brothers, you know, they, they took a different route. You know, they decided that, um, you know, they didn't want to live that life. So, you know, the streets were there out, you know, and unfortunately they had succumbed to the streets. My, my older brother has been, um, he's a year older than me. So we were born the same day, a year apart. Uh, we just both celebrated birthdays a couple of weeks ago. And um, he's been in prison since he was 17. And he's 40, he just turned 41, you know, wow. so, uh, so it's been 25 years since he's been in prison. My younger brother um, was two years younger than me. Um, he's, he just started serving um, a few years ago, um, an eight, eight to nine year prison sentence, you know. Um, and I just realized at the time that this cannot be my life. This cannot, I used to sit on my porch on Fillmore Avenue um, and I used to sit there by myself and I just, you know, sit on the porch and and I would just pray and I would just like, just have this vision for myself that was bigger than the circumstances that I was in at that time. And I'm like, you know what? This vision that I have, albeit that it might be, it's, it might seem so far-fetched, this is the vision that I have for my life. You know, so, and I was like, what do I have to do to get there? So I was very fortunate where I was connected to an individual, his name was Dwayne Hodges. Um, he was the director of the Upward Bound program um, at UB. And that program literally saved my life. It didn't change my life, it saved my life. It saved my life because it put me on a, an entirely, entirely different trajectory because I was no different from my brothers and you know, we used to get in trouble and things like that. But I just realized that that life wasn't for me. So education was my out, you know? I, it, you know and because I committed myself to education, you know, again, I graduated top of my class in high school. Uh, went on to college, had some, like I said, had some challenges in college, but I was committed not to go back to that, right? So, um, and because I made that decision, you know, I feel like that, you know, that it alter ultimately altered the, the, the direction of my life, you know, and, and, you know, for me, it's just all about just decisions. I, I feel like that we all have options in life, um, whether it's good or bad. Um, whether the circumstances that we, you know, and sometimes our circumstances are so extreme that we feel like that we're left with no better options than to maybe go a certain route. Um, but for me, it was just like, you know what? I always saw like consequences of my actions if I did something that, that I wasn't supposed to be doing. So, you know, and because I was blessed to have that type of vision, you know, um, and I thank God for that. I, I, I give all credit to God um, for giving me that vision you know, to see my life bigger than my circumstances. 
you know, and because of that, you know, I ended up, you know, having the life that I have right now, which I feel like is pretty incredible. <laughs> that is very incredible. Wow. Um, so you mentioned Mr. Hodges, yes. who are some of your other mentors that kind of help keep you on the right path and that are even inspiring some of your vision today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, obviously I have a quite a few. Um, I think about when I was in college, you know, uh, my professor in college, uh, uh, one of my African-American studies classes, Dr. Kush K. Bodwash, that is my guy. That like, even to this day, he's, a, uh, he's over at uh, Madai College right now. And he is just like, absolutely incredible. Um, just one of those guys who just keep it, he, he keeps it all the way real with you, you know? And I needed that, I needed that at the time. Um, and honestly, I, I even look at, you know, even currently right now, um, you know, people who inspire me are just like everyday individuals, people who are, who are actively out here, you know, trying to make a difference, trying to make a positive difference in the world, you know, and using platforms and media platforms and such to, you know, kind of help us to see the world in, in a different light. Um, you know, so, I mean, there's so many different, I, I tell people all the time, and I feel like the entrepreneurs of the world are the new celebrities, you know, like we look at celebrity life and, you know, sometimes people get so caught up in that. I, I feel like entrepreneurs are the new celebrities, you know, so, um, and I'm so encouraged by everyone who's out here who's starting businesses, everyone who's just like really just trying to change the trajectory of their family dynamics and such, you know. And also, too, I, I look at individuals um, like Dave Russ over at Say Yes, our executive director over at, oh my, man, listen, I love Dave, man. Dave is like, he's been a godsend in my life. He really has been like, I mean, he's like one of those quiet giants, you know what I mean? He's so soft-spoken, you know, but he, he gets it though. Dave gets it, you know. Um, Dave is 100% committed to like diversity and equity, you know, and, and really empowering people who don't necessarily look like him. Dave and I are of different hues, right? So, but Dave absolutely gets it. And, and you see, that's why, you know, people, you know, have so many great things to say about Say Yes. It starts from the top. It starts from the top, you know, and the way he empowers people, I'm like, it's, it's truly inspiring, you know, so it yeah, it really is. So, you know, again, I, I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, there's so many people who are out here that's, you know, that's, that's truly inspiring and it's changing the world out here. Um, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just trying to soak it all up and learn as much as I can from everybody so I can kind of play my little part. In, I, love in that. Kind of I love that. So while you're soaking this all up, Tell us what's next for Jamil Cruz. Oh my God, Eesh, man, yo, listen, I, my life is just like, you know, I've been telling people, you know, when I turned 40 a couple of weeks ago, I've been telling people that my next 10 years are not gonna look like my last 10. And my next 10 years are gonna be my best 10 years. You know, so, um, so personally, on a personal end, you know, I'm looking forward to expanding my family, and things like that. I know a lot of people is like, where, when are the kids coming? When are the kids coming? Like, they're coming, y'all. They're coming, you know, at some point, but they're coming, you know. Um, but, I, you know, and shout out to my wife, man. She's such an amazing individual. Um, um, and we, you know, just, just really vibing right now, just on the same page with just everything that we have going on in life. And it's been amazing. Um, so just making sure that I'm a, a better husband, a better friend, a better worker. Um, but also, too, it's just really... I'm growing this media platform. Uh, one of the things that you guys are going to see come, coming very soon um, is this podcast network, this Cruise Control Podcast Network. Right now, we have uh, seven podcasts under production right now. Wow. Yeah, so we have seven. I didn't podcasts. realize it was that many. Yeah, yeah. So we're growing. We're growing. I just had a call yesterday with someone. Uh, you know, we are, I mean, and we're touching every area. You know, we have the podcast about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have the podcast about mental health. Uh, we have the podcast about advocacy and such. We have the podcast with the boys and men of color with our Breaking Barriers podcast. Um, we have my podcast, the B-Suite podcast. Shout out to my co-host, Shatora Donovan. Um, you know, we, and one of the most consequential podcasts that I think that, um, that's going to come out the network is one that I'm doing with my brother right now. Again, I mentioned that my brother is incarcerated still. Um, and he's at the tail end of his sentence. Um, but what I wanted, the world is a different, it's, it's totally different from when he went in, right? Um, so one of the things that, you know, we have a, a few goals with this podcast. One, you know, we want to get him acclimated to, you know, the changes 
you know, and what to expect when coming out. Um, but also too, we are telling our story because my story is his story, his story is my story. We're telling that story in a way that hopefully will, you know, encourage people and deter people from wanting to go in the direction that he went, right? Um, so I'm so excited. We recorded our first podcast last week um, and he's he's co-hosting this this podcast with me from prison, guys. Wow. And like he he called me uh, when he calls in and, you know, we record the conversation and then, you know, we put that content out. So that's going to be coming out really, really soon. Um, so like this podcasting is, I think it's going to be kind of like the next, next big thing for me for sure. I love that. I'm going to ask you one more question and then I'm going to jump into the comments and questions that we have coming in from the audience. What advice would you give for young people looking to enter the media space, digital media, podcasting, you know, website design, any of that stuff? What advice do you have for them? Just get out here and create. That's it. Just get out here and create. You know, people seem to think that, you know, you need to have all of the, the high tech equipment and all of the expensive equipment. All you need is this. This is all you need. You get out here, you use this and you just get out here and just start creating. I tell folks all the time, like, you know, the best thing that you can do, you can get a tripod, set your phone up on a tripod, you hit record and you just start talking and, you, and you're recording content. And these things are so incredible. So, um, and then you just put that stuff out to the world. And, and, and the thing is people have this sense of like, if I, if I build it, they'll come. Yes, they will. It might not happen right away, but consistency is everything. If you consistently put out good quality content, I'm telling you, like, you will find your tribe. And I promise you, like, it, it can really mean the world for you. Like, whether you're in business, whether you're in a nonprofit space, you know, start a podcast. I, you know, I encourage people, like, use your voice. Like, I don't, I don't know what to talk about. There's so much that we can talk about. I mean, Chantel, if you want to start a podcast right now, you know, you can absolutely do that. You could do it, you know. So, um, so I'm just, I would just really encourage people just, you know, get out of your own way and just get out there, just start creating, you know, because I think once you do that, you, you'll get better at it as you go along. It's just like when I, when I started des designing websites, I sucked at first with my website. They were trash, but the more I did it, the better I got at it, you know? So, um, so yeah, you know, that's, I think that's the advice that I would give people. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay. So we're going to take some of the audience questions, folks. If you have questions, feel free to put it in the chat or the question and answer. I'm going through and looking at them now. Um, so we have one, Michaela wants to know from you, Jamil, are you hiring or taking interns with Cruise Control? Yes, we are. We are always looking for interns uh, because again, we, we realize that, you know, we cannot do this stuff ourselves um, and we're growing, right? We are, we are absolutely growing. And the more we grow, the more help we're going to need. So um, you can email me at info at cruise control media. That's C-R-E-W-S, uh, cruise control media.com. Just email me. Um, and then I'll, you know, have someone from the team we reach back to you. And I might even reach back to you myself if I, if, if I can flag the email. And um, yeah, we, we can absolutely bring, bring people in. We are always looking for answers. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, Monica asked, what did you take at UB? What was your degree program? Um, my degree, I got a, actually um, my BA in African-American studies. At the time, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and I wanted to be a teacher in the inner city. Um, I tried teaching. Um, <laughs> And I realized teaching wasn't for me, <laughs> you know. So uh, I, I did a I did a summer program. Uh, it was called um, Project Hope um, at the time. I was in college, um, and it was preparing me for for this uh, you know this this world of teaching. And I just realized I'm like I'm still young at the time. I'm like, you know, teaching is is not my that's not my ministry, <laughs> you know. So, so I was like, you know what, let me go with what I love in, in this media space. But at the time it was just too late and I'd already got that degree. So, you know. That's so cool. I did not know that you were African, um, uh, African history's major, had no idea. Yep. New information, Jamil is a friend of mine. And so I'm learning all kinds of new things about him today. Um, okay, just one of the comments, Colin said, Jamil, you are an influencer. Buffalo is so lucky to have you. Totally I'm agree. Colin. <laughs> yeah. Colin is the man. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Collins said, yes, Jamil, working at Say Yes is like a trip to Disneyland. Great leadership and great work. Listen, man, it, it really is. And shout out to Ms. Collins. She's doing some incredible 
incredible work, man. Like I'm, you know, I've been friends like her, um, her daughters. Uh, we went to, uh, I went to high school with uh, her oldest daughter and then uh, her other daughter, Yolanda, we were all, uh, young professionals. She was my, uh, I think she was my community service chair at the time. So yeah, great, great admiration for her and all of the work that she's doing and her family is just amazing. So thank you. Awesome. Ms. Um, Deb said, can you share where we can find information on the podcast? Yeah, so um, we actually are releasing our brand new website uh, really, really probably like within the next few days or so. Um, I just want to have all of our podcasts on there. Um, you can go to cruisecontrolmedia.com. Um, you know, right now it doesn't have the podcast on there, but um, again, I can, I can, if you email me, um, I can shoot you a link with all of the different podcasts and such. Because, but the thing is, when we launch this new website, all of the podcasts are going to be hosted all on this on the same platform. So, because right now we just kind of had them all over the place. But, um, but yes, uh, but email me info at cruisecontrolmedia.com. And um, I can absolutely send you a link to all the different podcasts that, that we're working on right now. Nice. Oh, really good question from Levi. Levi says, do you have any favorite media personalities that influence you or any books you recommend? Oh, man, I have a, oh, my God. Yeah, it's so many different people. It, it, that's such a loaded question because, like, it's, you know, in, in so many different areas, like, when it comes to this digital media space, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, over at Black Enterprise Magazine. Her, um, her name is Selena Hill. She's just absolutely killing it and crushing it right now in this media space. Um, you know, when people um, using their, their media platforms um, for, uh, uh, you know, for like positive change, I, I, you know, I have folks like another good friend of mine, he's a very controversial figure, um, Sean King. You know, he's absolutely incredible, really good friend of mine. Um, and he has a book actually, uh, where I have, I mean, I actually have it right here. Uh, he has this book called Make Change by Sean King. This is an incredible, incredible book. Um, and it, it really talks about how we can be, you know, better change agents in, in our, um, in our communities and such, but also to how we can use the platforms that we have, um, just to be able to create. Uh, you know, create content in a way that that can tell the stories and um, and, and and really advocate for the change that we want to see. So, uh, really, I, mean, I highly encourage this book. Um, Sean King is just absolutely amazing. Um, oh my God! I mean, it's so many, it's so many different books. Um, man, I, I mean, if you see, over, I, I mean, I have my my bookcase over here with just so many, you know, that I read over here. So, um, man. I mean, I could send you a list of, you know, again, of all the ones that, that I absolutely love, but. Uh, we'll create a, a, a Jamil Cruz book list. Man, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. We can start a book club, you know, let's do it. Right, right. I love it. So I'm not saying any, oh, she said, can you share your favorite books? Oh yeah, she said, can you share your favorite books to follow up? That's what Deb wants to know. So maybe we'll do like a follow-up post for you all on some of Jamil's favorite books. We'll put something together um, to post up. I have a, I have a bunch. I, I have listen. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna pull some. And the one thing that I'm big on too is audiobooks because I'm constantly on the go. Yeah. So I love just being able to just listen. You know, um, listen on the go. Like if I'm like I'm going on my way to the gym or something like that. I'm I just look, or if I'm like you know in the shower or something, I can listen to my audio books. Or if I'm cooking, I do cook. Um, my food is good. My food is actually really good. My mama from the South. So my food is the bomb, but, um, but yeah, I, I have quite, I, mean, I can tell you some right here that, you know, that I'm listening to, um, how to build self-discipline, um, let's get real or let's not play, uh, the daily stoic, good vibes, good life. Um, the 21 uh, success secrets of self-made millionaires, um, black fortune shook one. I absolutely love that book. It's really about mental health um, um, by Charlemagne the God. Um, and he's another guy too, Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club. He's a radio personality uh, from Power 105. He's absolutely amazing. Um, and what he's doing in this podcast space has been, it's been really, it's been really inspirational for me, um, extremely inspirational for me. Um, so yeah, Building a Story Brand by Don Miller. This is another credible book. Um, and, you know, these are all books that, you know, I've either, I'm either reading or I have read already. So, um, so yeah, so this, you know, I, I have a ton. I can, I can share the, 
share those with you guys. That's well. awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll follow up maybe when we send out the recorded um, links at the end of the series, we can include a, a Jamil Cruz book list. Um, we've had a couple times people have said in the comments that they love your energy, Jamil. So we just, I thought you should know that as we get ready to close. Um, Michelle said, I love your energy, keep inspiring. Amanda says, Jamil, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and success. God bless you and best wishes for you as you expand and grow. This was a wonderful presentation. Um, thank you so much. And Michelle said, keep moving mountains. You are certainly moving mountains. Um, we have five minutes left and something that caught my attention when you stood up behind you, you have your wall of pictures. Yeah. <laughs> what's, your, what's your most memorable moment back there? Oh man, so I, I kind of go through them real quick if you can see them a little bit. So um, this one, this is Erica Pittman in here. She used to work for um, Sean Puffy Combs. I met her um, at a conference, uh, the Revolt Music Conference. Um, I'm really into fashion um, sometimes, sometimes. And this is Dapper Dan. Um, he's a legend in the fashion world. Uh, TLC right here. I uh, met them backstage at a concert in uh, Toronto. This is probably one of my favorites right here. This is Kamala Harris. Um, got a chance to meet her quite a few times, actually. Um, this was at an Urban League event um, down in DC. Um, Kevin Lyles, uh, again, a, a guy in the, in the music industry who's someone I've always looked up to. This is also probably one of my favorites right here. This is, you see he's extra tall and I'm me and my wife extra short. That's Magic Johnson right there. I'm a huge Magic Johnson fan, both on and off the court. What he's been able to do in the, in the business world, especially in the black business world, has been absolutely incredible. Um, West Side Gun, um, he's a, an incredible hip hop artist here in the city of Buffalo. Um, and it's really just taking his brand um, worldwide. And it's been absolutely incredible. Um, Sean King right here, we had the opportunity to speak on the panel together a couple of years ago um, at the Urban League Conference. Uh, Andre Harrell, uh, rest in peace, Andre Harrell. He's a, a, you know, when we see people like Mary J. Blige and um, Sean Puffy Combs, this guy is responsible for their careers. Um, Damon John from Shark Tank, that's my, he's actually not, he looks taller than me in here, but he's really not taller than me. It was just the angle that we were standing at. So he's actually kind of short, <laughs> you know. Um, Lala Anthony, um, my wife was actually featured on her reality show. Um, maybe I want to say back in like 2011, 2012. Um, so we actually got a chance to go down there. We had dinner with her and such. So it was fantastic. And this is uh, another good friend of mine, someone who I absolutely look up to, Tamika Mallory. Um, she is, this was her at the 30 and the 30 awards. Actually, we honored her a few years ago uh, with our humanitarian award. And she's just doing incredible things in the social justice space. So, so all of this, like all of this means so much. And even um, this here, uh, the Buffalo Spree, uh, again, when they decided to list me as one of the top influencers under the age of 40, it's, it, it was just mind blowing to me. You know what I mean? So, And it's funny that you close out with the Buffalo Spree article. I'm going to just say this real quick and wrap up. My colleague Sharon Weber just said, great conversation. What an inspiration. Sharon Weber, actually, when our DEI committee, she's on our committee, uh, we were putting together the speakers for the series. And she sent me the link and she said, I just read this great article about this young man. And she sends me the Buffalo Spree article. And I'm like, oh, that's my friend. Of course. Yes. So Shout out to Sharon. She said, great conversation. What an inspiration. So um, Sharon, we, we thank you for putting Jamil on our radar again and making this wonderful selection. This was such a good conversation. Like I said, I know you personally, but I feel like I learned so much today. And it's just an honor to have this conversation. It's an honor to work alongside you with the Child and Family Services and Say Yes Buffalo family. And more importantly, an honor to serve with you in West New York. You are doing amazing things and we are so blessed to have you. Keep doing what you do. So everyone, I'm going to wrap up today. Thank you again, Jamil. I hope you all can tune in next week. We have Erie County Legislator April Baskin, who will close us out with our Black History Month uh, series. And she'll be talking about the future of Buffalo and how some of her work is influencing our community. So thank you all so much for joining. Make sure you do something with your families in celebration of Black History Month. Remember that Black history is everyone's history. Have a good one. Thank you, thank you guys.